Hello everyone, I'm Todd Hilton from Noor Video Productions. If you're between the ages of 20 and 30, you most likely grew up watching VHS tapes. So whether that be The Wiggles, or maybe it was Blue's Clues, or maybe it was Star Trek The Next Generation. Either way, this was a huge part of your childhood. If you're like me and in your 40s or older, you have very fond memories of VHS tapes. Whether that would have been recording your favorite TV shows to watch later, or going to the video store and renting a stack of movies to watch over the weekend while you stuffed your face with junk food. If you were really lucky, you got to make your own movies with your imagination. So what happens to all these childhood memories decades after they took place? Well, today I'm going to do my best to answer the question, how long do my VHS tapes last? Well, unfortunately, there is no easy answer. In a previous video, I discussed how I transfer my VHS footage to digital media. I can't stress the importance of this enough. In order to preserve these memories from the past and to avoid any further deterioration, Video transfer is extremely important. The biggest drawback, of course, is that it has to be done in real time. There's no quick fix. It's not like copying a file or even burning a CD or a DVD. It has to be done in real time, every hour, every minute by minute. Starting from the very beginning, the quality of the original tape stock ultimately affects how your video will look today. If you bought a brand name quality tape back in the day, such as Sony, Panasonic, Maxell, Fuji, Kodak, or JVC, the inventors of VHS, then the quality of your transfer today will be that much better. But if you opted to buy the cheapest crap budget videotape back in the day, then your quality today will be total garbage. I'm guilty of it myself, and now, all these years later, when I'm trying to transfer it, I'm paying for it. Probably one of the worst quality videotapes that I can remember, and I kicked myself for it, and this is why I remember the brand name. The brand name was called Master, and their high-quality videotape was called Chrome Master. Well, it was more like chrome crap piece of garbage. Yeah, so now here in almost 2020, the quality is terrible and it's never going to be the same. This terrible cheat brand is burned into my memory forever. And here it is. Chrome Master. Don't be fooled by the Kodak labels. Any labels that I had back then got slapped onto every tape I owned. It's a sad, tragic fate of what happened to this tape. Oh, it's intact, but the quality is terrible. But the footage on it is precious to me. It contains footage of one of my closest friends, Mr. Dan Bradley, uh, from the Noor Video family. Uh, it was a recording made when we were teenagers. Dan uh, passed away in uh, 2011. So the recording on this tape is very precious to me. And it makes me very sad that it will never look as good as it did the day it was recorded because I chose to use a cheap tape. And now, over 25 years later, I'm paying for my poor decision in tape quality. So that's the first thing. The next thing that will affect the quality of your digital video transfer is storage conditions. Videotapes are tougher than you might think. They can actually put up with a lot of abuse. They can put up with dusty situations, hot and cold temperatures. They can put up with a variety of poor storage conditions. But the one thing that is absolute death to videotapes is direct sunlight. Direct sun uh, or 
perhaps being in a window that has direct sun exposure, it is death to a videotape. It will actually melt, not only the actual tape stock, but the cassette housing as well. I have never had this happen, but I have stored tapes in various temperature conditions. Tapes can be stored in heated temperatures and cold temperatures. And from my experience, they have survived that. Most of my tapes have been locked up in my archives for years and years and years. Uh, some of them barely ever seeing the light of day. Uh, some of them are stored in hard plastic cases like this, which I would say is the best kind of storage condition. Uh, these tapes will hold up the best if they're in some kind of a case. Uh, even if they're in a sleeve, that's better than nothing. This is a plastic sleeve. Even these old kids' tapes, they were in paper sleeves. Again, still better than nothing. If all else fails and your tapes are not in any kind of a case whatsoever, they could still survive. There are so many variables here. Another factor that will ultimately affect the quality of a digital video transfer is something that a lot of people don't think about. How many times has the tape been played? One thing that you must understand about videotapes is they are recorded and played magnetically. Just like your old audio tapes that you used to put in your car stereo. It's a very thin magnetic film. So inside each of these cassettes are two reels housing the actual tape stock. This is the fragile part. The outside cassette housing protects the tape stock. So a lot of people don't know that how many times the tape has been played will affect the quality of the playback. The fewer times it's been played, the better it'll look. Now, if you have tapes that you recorded over and over and over and over, they will degrade much faster, just as playing them over and over will cause them to degrade. Now, I've been fortunate that a lot of my tapes have seen very little playback, especially the raw, unedited footage. It may have only been played a few times, just long enough to create a master edit. And then that tape would ultimately be put in the archive. So most of my tapes are in pretty good shape. But we're still wondering, how long do these tapes last? Well, taking into consideration all these other factors, tape quality, storage conditions, and number of plays, this will affect the quality of the tape itself. So now what I've done, I've gone into my archive and I have picked out a few tapes that will show you various examples of tape age. Uh, to be honest, I have not looked through these tapes yet. So I will be seeing these the same time as you. I have picked out several sample tapes here, including my tape uh, featuring my friend, Mr. Dan Bradley. Uh, this was recorded in the summer of 1990. And again, this was on a very poor quality cassette. It was only recorded once. It was not a recycled tape. So we'll take a look at that. Another sample that I have is actually in this plastic case. This is a raw footage tape. This is actually a super VHS tape, which was a professional format. Uh, this tape here would have been recorded in the mid 1990s, uh, between 1994 and 1996. We'll take a look at some of that. Here's another sample. This is another super VHS tape. And this one was a recycled tape. The most current recording on this tape was done in August of 2002. So the recording on this tape is recorded over a previous recording. So we'll take a look at that. Here is another sample also from 1990. This is a high school graduation 
from 1990, and this is actually a edit master. This is not a raw footage, so we'll take a look at that. We'll see how that one has held up. Uh, one of the older tapes in my archive uh, is another graduation tape. This one was recorded in 1988. So this is one of the oldest tapes I have in my archive. I do have older tapes dating back to 1986, but they weren't raw footage. They were actually just uh, cartoons that I had recorded. So I can't really count those because I'm looking at stuff that was actually recorded on camera uh, uh, as a comparison. So we're going to be taking a look at that stack of tapes and we'll see how they held up. June 15th, 1990. Please note, very important date in case we ever want to do something experimental which shall remain top secret for now. Well, I guess that's it. So, for another Nowhere video production, I'm Todd Hilton. Catch you later. Okay, I gotta remember, we gotta go back for the case. Yeah, just gotta remember where it is. Royce, what the hell was that? <laughs> but um, it's been a really good experience, and we've 
had to do a lot of hard work and get little sleep and eat a lot of chocolate and get some life and get some rings and I had to do some stupid things, but I think it's all going to be worth it. And Todd's been a really good friend. I've gone through a lot of crap in the last few days here, and Todd's been there for me, and I just have to say thank you. So, and thank you for Mark's taxi cab service, and thank you for... And the meter's still running, by the way. <laughs> and uh, Even as we speak. <laughs> thank you for Todd's mom's taxi cab service. And Her meter is still running, too, as well, as from what I hear, so... <laughs> I'm going back to Chicago, so I guess I was seeing Shall, him, shall I alert the police department? Yep. Jennifer Rose is on the way back. The old shaman decided he could trust Raven, so he decided to go back to his old ways. And one was taking an afternoon nap. And so while Raven was playing with the sun on the floor, the old man kicked back, closed his eyes, fell asleep. Oh, Raven saw his chance. He seized the sun up in his beak and up out of the smoke hole he went and when he reached the outer world he opened his beak and magically the sun returned to the sky exactly where you see it today. Now we have a special song and dance for Raven who is always bringing back the world's treasures. do it for this video. Uh, I hope you found this interesting and entertaining and I will be back soon with some more VHS related material. Uh, if you haven't done so yet, uh, please subscribe to Nowhere Video Network. That is Nowhere Video Productions exclusive channel on YouTube and also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm Todd Hilton and I want to thank you for watching.